Today I'm going to talk about standard possession orders, the acronym for which is SPO, Standard Possession Order. This is the schedule for visitation that's used in most child custody and divorce cases in Texas. The standard possession order is written into the law and it's used by judges and lawyers most of the time, but not all of the time. So even as you listen to this description, I got to give you this important caveat. Look at your own order. It's the wording of your order that determines when you have your child, when you must return your child. Your order may even say it's a standard possession order, but that doesn't mean that the lawyers, for whatever reason, may have changed a few of the terms. So I'm going to explain how it works in most cases, but you still have to look at your particular order and make sure it really is a standard possession order. This explanation of a standard possession order is fairly lengthy and complicated. So for those who want to go directly to one specific part of a standard possession order, we have these links here that you can go to Thanksgiving or Christmas or Father's Day and find out that specific explanation without listening to the entire discussion of a standard possession order. By far the most complicated part of a standard possession order is summer visitation. It takes quite a while to explain everything, so we're going to handle summer visitation in a separate video. Because it is complicated and somewhat hard to understand, I really strongly urge you to watch our separate video on summer visitation under a standard possession order. Every standard possession order has a schedule when parents are entitled to possession of the child but almost the very first sentence says it's any time the parents agree. So if mom and dad agree to alternate days or switch weekends, they can do that. They don't have to go by the court schedule. The court schedule is only for parents who cannot agree. Frankly, we hope that most divorced parents end up making their own schedule and they don't go by the court order. And I need to emphasize this. You don't have to go by the court schedule. You can agree on something else. But if you can't agree, then you have to go by the court order. If you do agree to do something different, it's best to put it in writing in an email or text message or even write it out and sign it if you're going to make a big change. Before you get too caught up in the visitation schedule, remember, it's any time the parents agree. This visitation schedule is the norm but it's really for parents who can't agree. Most judges do not like it when the parent with custody says, oh no, you can't have the kid, that's not what the order says. Well, maybe that's true, but let's be flexible, let's cooperate, let's follow the golden rule because you can't have the kid this weekend, so I'll swap with you because it's going to happen to me someday. So what I expect from you, you should expect from me. So please remember that. In Texas, visitation custody of children is not all mom or all dad usually. It's slightly more mom or slightly more dad. One parent has the child more than the other, usually 55 to 60 percent of the time. A standard possession order describes when the other parent, the parent on the short end of the visitation stick, has visitation. To determine when a parent is entitled to visitation with a child, a lawyer or a parent or a policeman in the middle of the night needs a copy of the court order, a calendar for that year or month, and very often a copy of the school district calendar where the child lives. As you figure out when you're entitled to your child, even if your kid is not old enough to be in school, you need to have a copy of the school calendar for the school district where your child either goes to or where your child lives if the child is under age five. If your child goes to a private school, you would look at the school calendar for the private school the child attends. If your child is homeschooled, you would look at the calendar for the school district where the child lives. This is important because a lot of these orders say that dad gets the child at the time school is dismissed or dad gets the child when school is dismissed for spring break and you have to know when that is according to the school district calendar. A parent with visitation under a standard possession order has weekends, has Thursdays, 
has half of the holidays and has a substantial amount of the summer. So let me go through each one of those individually. First on the weekends. It's not alternating weekends. One weekend mom, one weekend dad, one weekend mom, one weekend dad. It sometimes feels like that, but a standard possession order goes by for the weekend the Fridays. So dad has possession, for example, on the first, third, and fifth Friday of each month until the following Sunday or until school resumes on Monday. So if you look at a calendar of a typical month that only has four Fridays, it's fairly f easy to figure out. First and third is when one parent has weekends. Second and fourth is when the other parent has weekends. About three or four months every year have five Fridays. That's where it gets a little complicated. So if mom has visitation according to a standard possession order, she would have possession on weekends beginning on the first, third, and fifth Friday of the month. She would have alternating weekends that month. But when you get to the next month, the very next weekend is the first Friday of the month, so she would have two weekends in a row. So it doesn't follow the alternating weekend sequence when you have five Fridays in a month. This can be very confusing to parents. If first falls on a Saturday, that feels like it's the first weekend of the month. But you don't go by that. You go by Friday. So look at a calendar and see when the first Friday is of the month, and that's the weekend you have. When is the third Friday of the month? That's your weekend. Look to see if there's a fifth Friday. If there is a fifth Friday, you have that weekend. And then remember, you have the next weekend because that's always the first Friday of the next month. A parent also under a standard possession order has possession on Thursdays during the regular school term. So during the summer, the parent normally does not have Thursdays. You need to be aware that under older orders, the standard possession order used to have the midweek possession to be on Wednesdays during the regular school term. So if you have a visitation order from 12 years ago, it may say Wednesday instead of Thursday, which is why you should always carefully read your own order. But a standard possession order now says a parent with visitation has the child on every Thursday during the regular school term. Now, if a holiday comes up like Thanksgiving, that supersedes the weekends and that supersedes the Thursdays. Let's talk about other events and other holidays that trigger visitation. First off, if a weekend comes right after or right before a Friday or a Monday holiday, that expands the visitation. So if a dad, for example, has Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and Friday is a school holiday, then the dad's visitation starts on Thursday evening instead of Friday evening. If a weekend is followed by a Monday holiday, then that expands the visitation to end on Monday at 6 or Tuesday when school resumes. Again, you have to check your specific order and you have to look at the school district calendar to figure out when the kids are out of school. This also applies to hol national holidays during the summer. You will hear the term standard possession order and expanded standard possession order or standard possession order with all elections. Imagine a restaurant where you can order basic things like a hamburger, but if you won't, you can ask for extra like cheese. The standard possession order works the same way. The basic weekend is from 6 p.m. Friday to 6 p.m. on Sunday. But the parent with visitation can choose to add to that. They can pick up the child when school's dismissed on Friday. They can return the child when school resumes on Monday. So an expanded standard possession order adds a few hours or maybe even overnight visit to the weekend or to the Thursday. So for example, instead of 6 p.m. Friday to 6 p.m. Sunday, 
a parent working under the expanded standard possession order would get the child when the child gets out of school on Friday and return the child to school on Monday. If the parent has a job where he has to go to work at 6 a.m., he may not be able to take the child to school on Monday. So maybe he could pick the child up on Friday, but still return the child to mom at Sunday at 6 p.m. These choices or elections are choices of the parent with visitation. The parent with primary custody may not like that they don't get the kid back on Sunday, but if the parent with visitation ask for the expanded, it will be put into the standard possession order. This expanded standard possession order also applies to Thursdays. Thursdays can be in a normal order from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So you basically just have time for dinner. But if you elect the expanded version, you can have the child from the time school gets out on Thursday, keep them overnight, and return them to school on Friday morning. So these choices or elections have to be made before the order gets decided. You can't wait two years after your divorce and say, I want these extra hours. You would have to hire a lawyer and go back to court to change your order. But while your case is pending, either in a divorce or a custody case, the parent who's going to get visitation can elect or make it clear that he or she wants the expanded standard possession order, and they are going to get it unless the judge finds that it's not in the child's best interest. So for example, a parent who lives 87 miles away is going to have a hard time getting the kid to school on Monday morning without waking the kid up at 4 a.m. A parent who is always late and always gets the kid to school tardy on Monday or Friday mornings might convince the judge to not let him have those extra hours. Again, if a parent is a nurse and they work the night shift, they can't handle a kid who has to be at school in the morning. So it may depend on where parents live, it may depend on their transportation or their work hours, but in general, if a parent with visitation wants the elections of, of an expanded standard possession order, they will get it. A standard possession order has one version for parents who live less than 100 miles apart and one version for parents who live more than 100 miles apart. So for example, on weekends, the first, third, and fifth Friday till Sunday, or Monday if you ask for the election, is for parents who live within 100 miles of each other. If one parent lives in Houston and the dad lives in New York City, it would be real hard, unless he's an airline pilot or real rich, to come here three or two weekends a month. So for over 100 miles, if the parents live that far apart, the parent with visitation has the option to choose which weekend, one weekend a month, when he has visitation. So he can look at the kid's schedule and look for a three-day weekend and choose that one weekend in a month. So instead of having two or three weekends, he would just have one weekend, but he gets to choose which one as long as he gives advance notice. The only other real dis difference in a standard possession order for parents who live over 100 miles apart is the parent who lives over 100 miles away from the kid has every spring break, not just alternating spring break, and the parent who lives over 100 miles has 42 days in the summer instead of 30 days in the summer. So my discussion and I apologize, it is complicated, but I'm not the one who wrote this schedule, the Texas legislature did. My discussion of a standard possession order in this video is mostly going to assume the parents live within 100 miles. If the parents live more than 100 miles, you need to do some research and see what the visitation is. Other times of possession for a parent is on the child's birthday. When the child has a birthday, if a parent is not entitled to possession of the child on that day, that parent has the child from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on the kid's birthday. There's also Mother's Day and Father's Day. Mom is entitled to possession of the child from the Friday before Mother's Day to 6 p.m. on Mother's Day, or if they've chosen the expanded, maybe uh, till school resumes Monday morning. 
father is entitled to Father's Day on the weekend of Father's Day from Friday to Sunday. Remember, Father's Day occurs during the summer, so there's no returning the child to school on Monday morning. So that's how Mother's Day and Father's Day weekends are normally handled. When we have same-sex parents, like two moms or two dads involved in a custody case, the way we usually do it is to divide up odd and even years. So one year, if it's two mothers, one mother would have Mother's Day weekend in odd-numbered years, and the other mother would have Mother's Day weekend in even-numbered years. They could try and divide up Mother's Day on a Sunday, one of them to have till 2 p.m. and the other one after 2 p.m., but that would be up to agreement between the parties. Sometimes people ask about other holidays or other events like Easter, like Jewish holidays, like Muslim holidays, like a parent's birthday. Those holidays are not part of a standard possession order in Texas. Parents can agree to accommodate those other events the lawyers, if they're tipped off that these are important for these particular parents and kids, can write those into the order. But if you're following a standard possession order, we're not going to worry about those other holidays. It's just summer, spring break, Thanksgiving, Christmas holiday, Mother's Day and Father's Day, and the child's birthday. So, the big holidays, Thanksgiving, spring break, Christmas. Those holidays get split and shared. One year, dad has spring break the whole week from the time they get out of school to the time they come back to school or maybe the Sunday before they return. So that's like nine days. And the next year, the mother has spring break. One year, father has Thanksgiving holiday, the entire holiday. And the next year, the mother has the holiday. We go by odd and even numbered years. So your order will say, for example, that the father has spring break in even numbered years. So if it's 2020, that's dad's spring break. If it's 2021, that's mom's spring break. Thanksgiving works the same way. One has the whole holiday in odd years. One has Thanksgiving in even numbered years. Christmas gets split in two. Typically, kids are out of school in Texas for about two and a half weeks. So the standard possession order says that in one year, one parent has the child from the time they get out of school through Christmas until noon on the 28th. And then the other parent has the child from noon on December 28th until school resumes in January. So one year, one parent has the good part, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and the other part, parent has the second part. But then the next year they switch and the other parent has it. That can be really hard for parents with young kids where Christmas is a big deal. But I can tell you, one thing almost all children like about divorce is Christmas because they get two Christmases. So if you're the parent with the second half, you still have a tree up, you still have the family, you just celebrate on the 28th or 29th and the kid will not complain one teeny tiny bit. So we alternate Christmas, Thanksgiving, spring break. So if you're not confused enough, you need to carefully read your order because these orders are actually in plain English. It just takes a little while to understand it. But then you probably should talk to a lawyer and have the lawyer explain it to you. I recommend you get a calendar and color code it for the year, looking at the school district calendar, looking at your court order, and share it with, other, with the other parents so that you guys are on the same page. In conclusion, a standard possession order is the normal way we do visitation in Texas. Parents can add elections to expand the standard possession order. But the most important thing is that parents can do anything they can agree to, and they do not have to follow the court order. The court order for visitation is only when parents can't agree. And every lawyer, every judge, every psychologist and counselor, and probably every child would encourage both mom and dad to cooperate and make up their own schedule that makes sense for the work schedules and the lives of the children and the parents.